English lions, Indian tigers, and asymmetrical missile warfare. Oh my! Let's learn the fun size story of Tipu Sultan, India's Tiger King and Rocket Man. Imagine the dedication and countless hours necessary to develop a new technology. All that brain power, all that labor. Ultimately, success is attained, the achievement is demonstrated, and someone in the room says, that's pretty cool. Now, how do I use this to kill people? With the scientific upper hand, you can actually bring a gun to the knife fight. An asymmetric warfare is a story as old as time, where conquests are decided by who has the better weapons. However, with the development of a new and threatening technology, others move quickly to even the odds or raise them. This causes an arms race, much like the one during the Cold War. Back when the Soviet Union sent the first satellite and first man into space, and the US lost its mind wondering how a country with no Coca-Cola and no Levi's jeans could beat out the free world. So you see, being the underdog and sparking an arms race are not mutually exclusive. We can find just such an underdog in 18th century India. The British were extending their control over the region with their proxy, the East India Company. The company technically wasn't Britain, but the crown stepped in with military might whenever the company's interests were threatened. Many local kingdoms opted to ally with the East India Company for self-serving reasons. But one pesky state in the south, Mysore, was dedicated to resisting the British at all costs. Mysore was led by Haidar Ali, an illiterate soldier who had become the de facto leader, as well as by his son, Tipu Sultan. And they, especially Tipu, hated the British. More on this later. Since Mysore tended to harass other polities allied with the East India Company, naturally war broke out with the British. And you might expect that the story ends as it often does, colonizer crushing the less developed. And yes, this eventually happened, but not without decades of Mysore inflicting humiliating defeats on the British with the help of their secret weapon, their state-of-the-art rockets. Now rockets sound very 20th century, but in fact, they have been in use since the Middle Ages. The science behind them is quite simple, really. Pack a bunch of gunpowder into a container, light it, and then the rocket is propelled by the expanding gases, which are given only one way to escape, obviously, the back. Then, hopefully, enough gunpowder is left when the rocket hits its target to explode. Hopefully means unreliable. But Haider Ali and Tipu had revolutionized rocketry. Rather than use bamboo to encase the gunpowder, they used a hammered iron container. This added weight to the rocket, but it also made it stronger, able to hold more gunpowder, and therefore capable of a powerful thrust that more than made up for the extra weight. And they used these against the British with devastating effect. These rockets could hit targets up to a mile and a half away and were fitted with deadly instruments, either swords at the front or blades attached to the side, which when fuel got low, would cause the rocket to become unstable and spin, creating a veritable propeller of death. During the Battle of Polilur in 1780, Tipu's rocket blew up an ammunition stockpile leading to his victory. The war was won, and Tipu dictated the terms of the treaty to the British, the last Indian ruler in history to do so. But of course, military superiority never lasts forever. Mysore and England had yet another war where the British besieged Tipu's capital, Shirangapatna. The British returned Tipu's previous favor when a lucky cannon shot blew up a store of Mysorean rockets 
and a chunk of the wall along with it. In an event of supreme irony, Tipu was shot dead defending the breach in his own wall caused by his own rockets exploding. After the battle, the British captured some of his rockets and sent them to England where they reverse engineered the technology to make the even better Congreve rocket, named after its creator, William Congreve. You've heard of these rockets. Several decades later, during the War of 1812, which apparently was more than just in 1812 because the British were still invading the United States in 1814. The explosion of these rockets during the Battle of Baltimore inspired this song lyric. And the rockets red glare. But Tipu got the last laugh. While looting his capital, the British found live tigers and tiger print. Tiger print everything. This Indian Joe exotic had taken the fierce animal for his symbol, painting tiger stripes even in the interiors of his palace and his mosque. In Tipu's residence, the invaders found a peculiar artifact and a perfect symbol of Tipu's hatred. A musical instrument still on display in a museum in London. This was a massive organ fashioned in the shape of a tiger devouring a white man wearing a red British coat, which when cranked would mimic the sounds of a tiger roaring and the wails of its victim. To get an example of the sounds made by this instrument, I'll leave a link in the description. Remember, history isn't just kings and dates and Michael Bay style explosions. It's a story of you and me, just in different times and different circumstances. One big soap opera, and we should learn it that way. As always, please like and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, join the conversation on Reddit, and consider becoming a patron at patreon.com. Rocket man, burning on a fuse I haven't known. What is he even saying, man? <laughs>